Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Tuesday morning, uh, the week of Christmas, and so I'm posting a little bit early. Margaret and I are going to go run and grab some lunch together, so, and then I've got a tea time this afternoon to play a little bit of golf while it's nice weather. So uh, I thought I'd just post this a few minutes early so that um, you all can have time of devotion together. Our, our devotion today is uh, again out of the upper room. We're going to read the psalm, which is the 62nd psalm today for our devotion. Uh, we'll take time to read the upper room devotion from Julie Sype from Pennsylvania and take a moment to reflect on it, have time of prayer as well. So I'm going to wait for you guys just for a moment to make sure that you have opportunity, ample opportunity and time to be able to find your Bible and turn to the 62nd Psalm. Psalm 62. That's where we're going to be reading from today. Well, one of you found me on here early. Welcome. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. A couple of you are here. I'm glad that, uh, that you're here with me live. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started with our devotion. Psalm 62 is where we're reading. Only in God do I find rest. My salvation comes from God. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I won't be shaken anymore. How long will all of you attack others? How long will you tear them down? as if they were leaning walls or broken down fences. The only desire of this people is to bring others down low. They delight in deception. With their mouths they bless, but inside they are cursing. Oh, I must find rest in God only because my hope comes from God. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. All you, tr all you people, trust in God at all times. Pour out your hearts before God, for God is our refuge. Human beings are nothing but a breath. Human beings are nothing but lies. They don't even register on a scale. Taken all together, they are lighter than a breath. Don't trust in violence. Don't set false hopes in robbery. When wealth bears fruit, don't set your heart on it. God has spoken one thing, make it two things, that I myself have heard, that strength belongs to God and faithful love comes from you, my Lord, and that you will repay everyone according to their deeds. Good morning, Barbara Paddock, Garth and Cherry, glad you're here, Diane, glad you're here as well. As I said a moment ago, our devotion today in the upper room is from Julie Sipe. Julie is from Pennsylvania. Her focus verse is Psalm 4610, Be still and know that I am God. And here is the devotion that she offers for us today. After a long day at work, I accidentally locked my keys and my phone in my car when I stopped to get gas. After going into the gas station to call my husband, I went back outside to wait. It was going to be at least 40 minutes until he could bring the spare key. At first, I was frustrated. I had 40 minutes just to sit and wait without my phone to write emails or entertain myself. Then I realized that this quiet, uninterrupted time was an unexpected but much-needed gift from God. As I sat there with nothing to do, I realized how often I have unplanned quiet moments. When the cable is out, my phone dies, and I don't have a charger, my son's bus is running late, or I'm waiting to see the doctor, the unproductive time can seem like an inconvenience. But each quiet moment gives me the opportunity to take a deep breath, refocus my thoughts, and just be with God. So the thought for the day is... When can I stop and spend a few moments in God's presence? I would say that maybe in this modern technological world in which we live, the um, human being is more distracted than maybe at any other time in our lives, right? 
I, I remember, you know, it, it used to be that um, the most that anything would distract you inside your car was if you decided to turn the knob on the radio so that you could move the band from one to another. My, uh, my 1967 Corvair that I had, my grandfather gave me as my first car, had an AM only radio in it. Now, luckily, it was well, Delco had gotten to the point where you, you had to push buttons on it that you could preset as well. So I, I had I could push the buttons, but but still, you know, you had to look over for just a little bit, and, and that was how distracted you were in your car. Now, as sophisticated as cars are, and the fact that people have cell phones, I see more and more drivers these days that are reading emails and sending texts and, and things like that while they're trying to drive a vehicle at the same time. And it, we're just distracted, right? I, I you know, I, one of the other things that, that reminds me of this too is, is just simply, um, you know, riding the trains in New York City and Washington, D.C., all the times that we were in Washington, D.C., and the number of times we rode the subway and, and things like that in Washington, D.C., People are constantly walking around with earphones in and their phone in their hand. And they're either listening to a podcast or music on Spotify or Pandora or something like that. And it's just, it's just interesting, you know, that, that people, um, that people find themselves so distracted today by all the things around us and, and how hard it is for many just simply to put down their phone and not play with it. I, I, I have difficulty with that, even at the times where I'm just sitting and relaxing, just letting my phone be you know, can be tough for me. To think about all this distraction that we have and, and the fact that it takes away from our opportunities, it, it consumes our time, and, and because of that, we have less and less opportunity maybe to spend time with God. Or we're so distracted, we don't think of the fact that we have time to spend with God. Now, that's probably more the case, is we're so distracted, we don't even think of the fact that we have time that we could be spending with God. So what do you do then to be able maybe to combat that? Could be that you use your calendar. And maybe you use your calendar to just simply block out time each day. And you say, from noon to 12.15, I'm going to go on a silent retreat from my phone, my laptop, my television, music, you know, my whatever it is, my Alexa devices that are playing, you know, all those things. And you just go on a silent retreat for 15 minutes so that you could spend time with God. Use your calendar if you need that. Maybe you do it first thing in the morning. Maybe you have a routine and a discipline. You're a little bit more disciplined than me. And you can do those kinds of things. But I would say that the way in which we grow in our relationship with God is to find ourselves present with God. And that takes some intentional focus for us to be able to do. So how are you going to accomplish that? Maybe as you think about going into 2021 and you want to make a resolution, maybe your resolution is, is that you want to spend 15 minutes with God each day in quiet. How do you make that happen for yourself? It's a challenge for us. It'll be a challenge for me. I hope that it's one that you'll take up as well. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So dear God, we thank you for being with us throughout our day. Help us to recognize and appreciate moments where we can be still in your presence. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for being here. Kelly, glad you were here as well. And that's nice. That's cool. You guys still have your dart. That's pretty cool. Most reliable car you own. And the only one you can actually work on, right? <laughs> oh, and thank you, Chris and Barbara, for being here as well. Glad you guys are here. So, all right. Hi, hey, Ruth. Good morning to you as well. So um, as I post this, um, you know, I hope folks uh, certainly will join at 1145 as well. But I'm glad all of you were here this morning for our time of devotion. I'll be on tomorrow again at 1145. So I'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for our devotion time. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Going to be a nice, beautiful day outside. Tomorrow's going to be cold. So just so you know, but enjoy the rest of your beautiful Wednesday. God's peace and grace be with you. 
and I'll look forward to seeing you soon.